So, and then um, back in the days, we decided, okay, um, so we have the Peakwork distribution software, production and supply software, and next to it, on the blockchain as a building block, we built the Web3 vouchers and scanners and the trading platform. So that was last year's effort um, where we were when I was on this stage. Continuing this, we added a lot of building blocks um, in the last year into Peakworks offerings. We found out that, um, and um, Mark mentioned it earlier, that loyalty systems are very, very close to, to being utilized on blockchain, on the Camino blockchain. Um, FYI, um, Starbucks and uh, Delta, they easily merged um, partly their loyalty programs and you can spend uh, your miles uh, to get a Starbucks coffee due to blockchain. It's not a long implementation, it's easy, it's um, easy to implement. Yeah. So, and we added um, to what we had already, um, we added um, an off-chain brick um, and Web3 self-custodial wallets. Um, because that also leads maybe to a bit of um, reflection what happened. The CEOs we talked to of our clients were on fire. Uh, let's go for it. Um, let's implement a case on Camino. Um, the chief marketing officers of the companies we are working for, two operators, airlines, etc., they were on fire for it and, and wanted to onboard it to the idea. But then, um, talking to the CFO, uh, he said, hold on, what? What? Tokens? Uh, cryptocurrency? Uh, uh, blockchain is fraud? Whatever? Bitcoin? Yeah? And, and that was a challenge we, we tried to tackle together with our partners. Yeah, because um, what we figured out in this year, and it was a, a learning curve that we had to take, was that without a clever financial handling and the simplicity of Web2, you might not tap into the right customer base if you only utilize the Web3 things. Yeah, like, and therefore, we implemented, um, together with our partners, um, some um, solutions, but I'll explain later on who those partners are and what we did. So what does it consist as of today? It's the voucher platform, it's including a scanner. So here, um, imagine every touristical asset. Yeah, it could be a hotel room, but it could also be the famous Balinese day bed in the beach club um, that is uh, put on the blockchain, traded, and at the point of redemption, it's uh, redeemed um, with the scanner app, which is a small web uh, companion. Then we added the trading, which is um, available, so our clients have the possibility to, um, in case you don't see it, there is trading on it, um, our clients have the possibility to um, put their bookings on Camino, which is then minted as an NFT, and if they decide that a hotel room or an airline seat or something should be available for a retrade, they can set up a loyalty or a commission that they want to earn with every sale of this touristical asset. Which means, um, in the long run, um, you get an, uh, an also constant stream of revenue the longer you trade these things. We started first with uh, simple to use uh, things like um, a night um, in New Year's Eve, because that's a rare occasion, that's not a single booking uh, 9th to 11th uh, Mallorca. I think that will come in the future, but the resistance is a bit higher for the, let's say, convenience products that airlines and um, hotel suppliers are selling. Then we have um, the peak work portfolio, um, which basically is an overview of all the Web 2 and Web 3 assets that you hold in conjunction with the Camino blockchain. Yeah? So like your inventory solution on the Web 3 things. And then we added a big portion um, this year, and we invested a lot in that, was basically around loyalty systems. I'll explain later a bit um, what it evol evolves around, but the idea of that loyalty system is um, there are too many hotels that can't participate in a large chain. Imagine boutique hotels, the small hotel Garni around the corner, and then thanks to the interoperability of the blockchain, they can all jointly join one large loyalty program. So you spend one night here in a boutique hotel and you get points and you can redeem them later in another hotel that is technically not even connected to the other ones. They don't know each other, but you can participate thanks to the blockchain technology in this scenario as a hotelier. 
And then the off-chain brick is something where we, um, where we implemented APIs, etc. At the end, it says um, you can imagine it as a bridge between our Web 2 peak work world and the Web 3 peak work. Uh, that means wallets, uh, custodial, non-custodial, etc. All these implementations. So, how did we achieve that? Well, um, first of all, um, and um, Rob was on stage this morning um, with SH Financial. Here's the catch. When a client of us says, yes, I'm in cool blockchain, here we go, then they say, okay, but <laughs> how do I convert it into fiat, into real money? Yeah, what's in for me? And then you can't just go to a client, sorry, I'm, I'm just naming TUI or Deteristic or anyone that works with Peakwork and tell them, yeah, we have that algorithmic uh, backed uh, stable coin and it might go down to zero. Every CFO will tell you, okay, there's the door, it was good to talk. So therefore, we established a partnership with SH Financial, and for every euro that you want to put as a stable coin into the blockchain network, into the Camino, you get a backed euro inlay on a bank account, which is in Lithuania, which is real. There's real money behind the cryptocurrency associated with the blockchain, which is a very important point for the financial part of an organization, right? And um, yeah, I, I mean, you, you've seen the pitch, uh, so I don't need to um, go again through the SH Financial. Then um, Hotelnet is our first partner where we signed an agreement. Hotelnet is a booking engine, inventory system, PMS mixture of um, hospitality offerings, and um, we are launching the loyalty program for all the hotels that are on Hotelnet solutions. So where they can interoperability, uh, utilize the interoperability um, across that. Very important thing, and um, I mean, I don't want to share the secret sauce of Peakwork, but I guess we are such in an early stage that we can all, you know, talk about the experiences that we have as tech companies. Um, uh, you need something like Web3 Auth. I mean, I'm not voting exactly for those guys, but you can't tap into the market if you don't bridge Web3 and Web2. The audience is, is much smaller, so we decided to go with Web3 Auth. That's basically your lock-in with Google feature, or lock in with Facebook, the things that you know today in Web 2, combined with a Web 3 wallet. Yeah, so you don't need to worry about the long passphrase that you need to keep in your safe and don't put it on your phone, etc. It's pretty easy and straightforward, easy going. And then last but not least, um, we are also partnering with Camino and uh, Camino Messenger. Um, but on that side, um, we'll probably hear, and no, we'll definitely hear um, a bit later um, in the afternoon. Well, now um, coming to the demos. And um, um, as I said, we have recorded a video and um, th that shows basically um, what we've implemented um, for, for this application. The hotel extras that we implement, um, and I'll explain it first because I see I'm running out of time and uh, you know, I don't want to be like Mark, ending much earlier, but I don't want to exceed the time, so maybe I'm just skipping the, the live demo or the, the video demo part. Here's the catch. Uh, we as Peakwork, we launch a B2B solution for travel agencies um, in the DACH, so Germany, Austria, Switzerland region, and um, what we are building into our tool is that a travel agent can access a touristical asset in our B2B platform. Yeah, and how does that work? Um, we have partners like uh, MTS um, that serve today um, a lot of ancillary services. Yeah? Um, an early check-in in the hotel, um, a private transfer over the transfer bus, um, all these small ancillaries. The issue that MTS holds is they don't want to deal with every single travel agent. Yeah, so that's just cumbersome to invoice every single travel agent. So we're putting the ancillary services um, on the blockchain. And when a travel agent wants to buy these services from MTS, they can do it in the blockchain technology. How does that work? And, and sorry that I, you know, I could start the video probably in the background, but then you all be you know, um, distracted from what's happening. Um, how does that happen? Um, in set, uh, so in our B2B tool, you will um, see an interface where a travel agent can see which hotels hold an extra service independently of um, the tour operator. Yeah? And then they can buy it in, 
and then get the vouchers, and either it's redeemed at the time when the person checks in the hotel, or it's redeemed because it might be another service um, already at the purchase. Uh, so the NFT is then burned either at the time of redemption or the NFT is burned uh, immediately because it's a service that you get from, from MTS. And um, usually you would say, and, that, and that's where I want to lead here as well, is usually you would say um, travel agents and innovation is something like, I don't know, um, Germans and Magaluf. You know, you don't see them often together. And therefore, it's something where the point that a travel agent is on blockchain technology is something that we learned you shouldn't put in the forefront. Yeah, Camino, of course, when we are on that conference, the blockchain is in the forefront of the sales process. But if you tell the travel agent, hey, you know that there is a service and you don't need to sign a new contract and you don't need to implement a services provider per API, then that's a use case you can pitch to them. And then they buy into the idea and with Web2, they basically give their credit cards, they load an account, and in the background, we hold the custodial wallets on Peakwork side, uh, sorry, on SH Financial side, and that means you're not in the view of financial authorities, regulations, etc. cetera. Uh, and that's how we tackled that challenge, how to get a classical Web2 person, a travel agent, into this new, shiny, crazy world of Web3. The simple answer to it, as a summary, and I'll then come to an end, is uh, keep it very, very simple. Because if you want to tap into that large user group out there that's barely handling their Google logins and log in with Facebook and OneAuth and whatever, you have to play it simple. Otherwise, um, you, you talk about, I don't know, how many percent of the population have a Web3 wallet, maybe. 3-5% in Europe, I don't know, last year it was something like 5%, maybe it's this year it's 6%, but the market that you could reach with such a simplified solution by bridging the gaps between Web 2 and Web 3 is really huge. So, having said this, um, I have 45 seconds uh, left, so I think I'm on time. Thanks for all the attention. <laughs>